Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have Taj uh, talk to us about the transaction fee dynamics to safeguard against undercutting attacks. Taj, it's yours. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, this was supposed to be uh, Claire Bao's talk, and Claire is not feeling well today, so I'm gonna give her slides. Uh, presentation for you guys. I'm familiar with the work because, you know, as you can see here, advised by Neha Nirula and Taj Raja, that's me. So I worked with, have worked with Claire on this project. Um, but I will say these are her slides and she made them and I sort of saw them this morning. I'm like, okay, I, so I, I might like get the slides out of order or something. Uh, so, and, and I will definitely say this is, you know, Claire's work. I'm just, you know, trying to present it because she's unfortunately not able to be here and I hope she's watching on the, you know, stream or something. So, hi. Um, Okay, so this is about transaction fees and long-term incentives. I think uh, if you saw Neha's talk yesterday, she mentioned this talk, and we'll talk about that. So um, just some context definitions of what we're talking about here. Um, I think people are probably aware of this, especially this is really good timing because this stuff is very topical right now. Um, mining, you know, people mine blocks. Everyone knows about that in Bitcoin, hopefully. Um, and miners mine because they want money, specifically Bitcoins. Um, and there's, you know, there's two parts that they're getting, right? They're getting transaction fees. So when people submit transactions, they can add, you know, the difference between the input side and the output side ends up going to whoever mines that transaction. And then there's the block subsidy, uh, new coins, right? So that block subsidy just dropped from 6.25 to 3.125. Uh, yeah, uh, two nights ago. Um, yeah, and that goes down every four years. I'm going to give a little, well, I'll go to mempool.space in like one or two slides to sort of show what we're talking about, uh, the attacks we're talking about in this paper. Um, so an undercutting attack is an attack where a miner intentionally reorgs, intentionally forks the blockchain to steal transaction fees from previous blocks. And this seems bad, right? Like what's nice about Bitcoin is that it keeps going forward. And there's this blockchain, it just keeps going, things get confirmed. And once you have a transaction that has a few confirmations, it's like very secure. You're pretty sure it will, you know, not get reorged out. Um, okay, so let me let me just show what I'm talking about in. Do it. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, so people, I, I'm guessing are familiar with mempool.space. It's a nice uh, block explorer that sort of shows what's going on in Bitcoin. And you probably were looking at it. Uh, if not, then this is you know check it out. It's fun fun site. Um, a day or two ago, what was it? Uh, Friday night was the halving. And if you're, you know, a Bitcoin nerd like me, you were looking at this site and being like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to, I mean, you know what's going to happen. It's, it's going to have. Um, and people were betting about reorgs. People were talking about reorgs on this, uh, you know, when the halving happened. Okay. There, well, there, okay. So this golden block, I mean, this is just a website, right? If you actually look on Bitcoin Core, and you just look in the RPCs. There's there's no glowing, and there's no you know, um, but this was the first block with a low with a lower fee, and and what's really convenient about mempool.space, it shows the total mining reward. Or sorry, no, it shows the total fees. It does not show the total mining reward. So here, where it says 1.045 bitcoins, um, that's just the number of fees, right? And so subsidy, they call it subsidy. I think what did we call it in this? Yeah, block subsidy. Um, the, the block subsidy uh, Friday night at, you know, eight or whenever it was, was 6.25 coins, you know, new coins per block, plus the 1.045 gives you, you know, 7.295 total, right? And so this is sort of saying, okay, here's all the fees. And you can see it's like, eh, about a Bitcoin, sometimes two. It's variable though, right? This goes up and down. The block subsidy is constant throughout this, and then it drops all of a sudden. But what's interesting here is actually the subsidy plus fees was 40 Bitcoins. So enormously higher because the fees were 37 Bitcoins, which is, yeah, two something million dollars worth of Bitcoin. So if you were the miner that found this block, you know, you, you knew you were going to get three Bitcoins, but you ended up getting 40, which is cool. Um, but what's very interesting is if you look at the next block, right, this is, so this is the first, you know, 84000 and then 84001. Um, way less in terms of fees, right? You go from 37.626 to four and, you know, plus, and if you look at the, you know, plus three, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So this is going to be like seven something. Yeah. So total reward for the miner, 7.6. Total reward for the miner here, 40. 
So, and then it shows the pools. So there's like via BTC and then brains pool, right? The different mining pools that find this. If you're a miner though, you really, clearly you really want to find this block because this block is worth two and a half million dollars. And this block is worth eh, 480K, which is, you know, hey, it's still a lot of money, but um, this is really attractive. And if someone found this right before you did, Right, so you were mining, and then ah, oh, someone found this having block, and they got you know two and a half million dollars. Well, I guess I'll start working on the next block, and you you can see right away before you actually find the block what it'll look like. Right, that's part of how building it, and so you know you're going to get the seven coins instead of the forty coins. But you, what you might do is say, hey, wait, why don't I just try to mine that old block? Right, that was worth forty coins. That's way more than seven. What if I just you know, mine this one instead of the next one. And then it's like, well, someone already mined it, right? You have to keep going. It's like, well, you're supposed to, that's what the software does by default, but you can just say, no, I'm going to mine. I'll have two blocks that are 80, you know, the having blocks. And then who knows which will, which will go, you know, which will end up being in the actual blockchain. Um, and so this is called an undercutting attack. Oh, sorry, the specifics of undercutting. Okay. Well, maybe I should just go to the slides. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so so the idea of this, I'll, I'll talk a little more about the mechanisms and the different ways to do undercutting attacks. But you can see that this is like, there is some incentive to be like, hey, I want that thing you just got. I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to like be digging for scraps. You got all the good rewards and there's not much left for me. So I want to fight you instead of progress the chain. And so this was, uh, I guess, initially talked about in a paper I mean, the sort of idea has been around, but this, there's a good paper in 2016 from uh, researchers at Princeton that said that, um, I think, and the title of the paper was Bitcoin is unstable without the block reward, which is maybe a little, going a little far, but they're showing that there are these incentives for undercutting attacks in the long term in Bitcoin, right? Because every time there's a halving, there's less new coins coming out each block. And so eventually, you know, 2140 or whatever, there's no new coins, but really way before that, it's, it's a minimal amount. And so the fees are variable and you might have a situation like that where like, hey, someone just got all the fees. I want that. I'm going to fight for it. Um, and uh, the work, this work with the, you know, Claire and myself and Neha is looking at a wider range of scenarios. So not just, um, not just with highly variable fees and no new coins, but what if the fees are not variable or what if the fees, you know, block size limits, things like that. Um, because this, this Princeton paper from 2016 assumed unlimited block size, which you know, simplified the equations and stuff like that. But it was also kind of a interesting time where everyone was fighting about block size. And so it was like, okay, yeah, if you have un unlimited block size, bad things happen. But we already sort of figured that. So what about if you have limited block size? Do the bad things still happen? Um, so some of the key findings from, from this work is that Bitcoin is safe from undercutting attacks with a very small block size limit relative to... Um, your sort of stream of incoming transactions, right? So you can sort of think, oh, blocks come every 10 minutes or so, and then transactions come every second or so. And if you have enough transactions coming in that the blocks are always full, and then you have this backlog, that does seem to make it safe. Um, and undercutting attack, but undercutting attacks can still happen with highly variable fees, like we were just, you know, I was just pointing out on mempool.space. Um, so yeah, we have these like different, um, parameters we're looking at block size limit um and block size limit for people who are you know a little bit newer on this blocks used to be pretty empty um until yeah 2016 or so blocks were generally not full and so you kind of didn't have to pay fees at all it was it was kind of awesome uh, <laughs> you could just make transactions and they were free and, and then people got really mad when you couldn't do that anymore and then we had you know bitcoin cash and all this stuff um so but right now compared to the mempool blocks are very small so like you can see wait uh, oh i don't uh, uh, okay wait i want to keep that because i kind of want to click on that but then i'll make a new tab um so if you look and you know i i say the mempool and everyone sort of says the mempool but obviously there is no the mempool if we are all agreed what the mempool was we wouldn't need to mine but there is sort of a general like eh, 99 percent agreement but that last one percent is why we need to expend terawatts uh to mine bitcoin but um the yeah so if you look at this this their their view of the mempool they can see sorry i thought it show oh yeah like a gig or so they see like a gigabyte of transactions and you know a, a block i think these are v bytes 
And so you can only have a million. So there's like a thousand X, right? Their, their view of the mempool is something around a thousand X what a single block can contain. So you've got, yeah, like a week of, of sort of runway there, right? If, if no one submits any more transactions and can people completely stop submitting transactions, they could keep mining full blocks for about a week-ish. Um, but you can also see that it falls off, right? So they're saying, okay, in the next block, we see an average of 264, then 155, then 139, then 122, and it sort of presumably power law drops off. That doesn't mean that this will actually happen. It's much more likely that that you have a sort of flat, like it's just as transactions come in, they sort of bump things up. Um, but that's a good metric that we're looking at right now. So net, right now we have sort of about a factor of 1,000x. And so yeah, block size limit tends to be in the last year or so 0.5%, you know, like a 200x ratio. There's a large ratio, a very large backlog compared to what a single block can contain. Um, and yeah, blocks are 100% full. That, some asterisks, there, you will see these like empty blocks occasionally. That's usually because two blocks came out very, you know, in a short interval. And so the, that's sort of an artifact of how the mining up pools work. Um, but in general, blocks are, are you know, 3.99 VMB or whatever. Um, and so in this scenario, does undercutting occur when the block size is small and you have, let's first just think about like flat fees, right? So we say, okay, fee gradient, none. All the fees for all the transactions are the same. Um, and we'll look at like block size. So if block size is high and by greater than one, we mean the block size is higher than everything in the mempool and low and very low is like smaller than everything in the mempool. And so we can see that like it's safe in low and very low and it's not safe from high. Um, we can also look at the once you have a fee gradient, like a f high frequency and low frequency difference in fees. So that's like saying um, occasionally a large fee transaction shows up that you can include. And this means, you know, this happens like maybe every 10 seconds. You know, there's a there's a gradient, but it's sort of uniform in that every block will be able to include high high fee transactions. And here's this low fee frequency is something more like what we saw uh, two nights ago, where it's like, yeah, this is kind of a one-time thing. Um, I, you know, I don't think you're going to see another block with 40 Bitcoins reward, maybe ever. I, I don't know. I shouldn't say ever. But, but yeah, this is kind of a one-time. This is a low frequency kind of thing. Um, so fee frequency is how frequently high fee transactions come in, and fee difference is, you know, what's the difference between the highest and lowest fee transactions? Um, and so the general idea here is that there's, if the block size is really low, then this is always safe, even with crazy stuff going on. Um, but when you have high block size that can sort of sweep out the entire mempool, uh, it's sort of never safe. And then, you know, you, you, we can look at the borderline between these two things. Okay, so background, a little bit more about the strategy. So some of the strategy between undercutting attacks. Let's say there is, and, and we, we modeled this, or you know, Claire did all the programming, but the model is there's like default honest, which means you're just running Bitcoin D, right? And the default honest does the right thing according to the pro protocol. And it builds on the first seen block. So if you see a block, you start building on top of it. If you see another block of the same height, you ignore it, right? So if, if there's like multiple blocks at the same height, you just say, well, that's the first one I see, so I'm going to build off of that. Um, even if it might benefit you to build off one of the other ones. Um, undercutting attacks when there's two can, it, can occur when there's two types of what's called deviant rational, where they're doing, they're breaking the protocol, but they're doing so in a way that might make them more money. Um, yeah, so they could deviate. So the undercutting deviant rational strategy has the option to fork to build a block at a previous height and leave some of the mempool value untouched for the next person. So that's kind of the clever part of this where, and then petty honest is someone who's not going to fork. They're not going to like attack someone behind them, but they will say, hey, I don't need to pick the first block I saw. If I see two blocks at the same height and one of them takes all the high fee transactions and one of them leaves some of the high fee transactions for me, why don't I go with that one, right? Like I'll make more money and I still progress the chain. So, so for example, let's say, um, Someone finds a block sort of like this glowing yellow one where it's got really high fees, right? So someone finds a block with 110 in fees. And then there's like not much fees left after that. 
right? They sort of clear out the mempool. There's not much left. And someone says, you know what? I'm going to just mine that same block, right? That same height, but I'm going to take half of what that person took, right? So I'll mine, you know, at the same height, but I'm going to take 55 and I'm going to leave 55 for the next person. And if the next person coming along is what's called petty honest, you know, if they're default, they'll just build off of here and mine a block with hardly anything in it. But they could say, well, yeah, I'll mine off of this, right? This is, I get 55, you get 55. Hey, we're, we're, we're good. Um, and so that's called the petty honest miner. And this, we haven't seen this happen, but it does sort of seem like, yeah, rationally that makes sense. If you're a miner, it doesn't make sense to just go off of first scene, right? You sh and if, if there's two at the same height, you know, if you're a miner, I got to pick between zero and 55. I'm, I'm dumb if I'm picking zero because I don't make any money. So I should pick the 55, even though that enables these uh, undercutting attacks. Okay, so the simulation models these three mining strategies, which is default honest, petty honest, and undercutting over a long period of sort of randomized blocks and sort of looks at which miners make the most money. Um, simulates the mining process, looks, you know, looks at which is most profitable and sort of incentivizes that strategy. You get these like strategy weight things. Sorry, I'm sort of glossing this part because this is the part that Claire knew all about and I didn't really look at her code that much. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, which strategies win due to having the most profit, right? And so undercutting, yeah, if you have large blocks, undercutting will happen frequently. So here's this new work. You have like block size limit and flea fee gradient. So the block size limit is... We, we, we call it a normalized block size limit. I'm sort of saying it's normalized to the rate of incoming transactions. So it's not just like one megabyte, right? It's, well, this is how, how much of a backlog we will get, right? So if there's only one transaction coming in every 10 minutes, then a block size limit, a normalized block size limit of one would be like 300 bytes, right? But if a, there's a ton of transactions coming in, the normalized block size limit might be a very high absolute value. So we say, yeah, one means you're just keeping even, right? The mempool's not growing or, or shrinking. You're, you have your block size perfectly tuned so that the number of transactions that come in in the mempool is exactly the same size as the number of transactions that can leave the mempool by being confirmed into a block. And so, yeah, near zero means you have a very small block and the mempool will just keep growing in size. And greater than one means the block size limit is large enough that you can sort of eat away at the uh, mempool and eventually get rid of the mempool, so it, like empty it out. Um, so the result here from the simulation is that the uh, normalized block size limit is less than one. You're safe, right? You you have an indefinitely growing um, mempool, and there's no real reason to undercut because there's sort of enough for everyone. You can, and this is with um, uniform fees, right? So why why would I leave someone for the next? I can just take. It's like all you can eat. I can take, I can fill my block with all the transactions I want and there's still enough for the next person. So that's what I do. And this is sort of a plot, you know, it sort of makes sense, right? As this normalized block size limit stays under one, it's like, yeah, all of these are kind of the same because you have an indefinitely growing mempool backlog. And then as soon as you hit one, it's like, boom, and you have this huge amount of attacks because in this side, everyone's fighting over scraps. There's not enough transactions to go around. Um, and so people are sort of, reorging each other and it's a big mess. But over here, there's this huge backlog and so you don't need to do it, right? So uh, original paper, a lot of fighting over like not enough fees. Here, a uh, large backlog, all the miners sort of do the right thing. Um, yeah, so this is undercutting same with, but let's look at fee gradients, right? It's not the case that all the transactions have the same fees. You have some high fee, some low fee. And so the way this was modeled is, I think it was just modeled as some transactions are worth like 10 and some transactions are worth one. Um, and the thing we varied was fee frequency. Like how often do we get these high fee transactions? And so if you have low fee frequency, these like valuable transactions maybe only come out once every hour or something, right? So, you know, not even within a block. Um, so something like this, where most of the transactions are only worth one sat or one whatever, but sometimes you have a transaction that's worth 10. And that versus high free frequency where like, well, every block, you're going to get a couple of these. Maybe some blocks you get two, maybe some blocks you get three, but you're going to have many per block. Um, and so for high free frequency, um, there's no additional incentive, right? The idea is if there's, if there's a gradient of fees where some transactions are high fee, some are low fee, 
but these are coming in very frequently, you'll still have a pretty uniform reward per block, right? And so there's not much incentive to do these attacks, right? So you say, okay, there's a limit. I can only put three transactions in my block. I say, oh, I have a two, one, and one. And now here's this mempool. Well, whoever's next can take two, one, and one as well, right? Um, so the undercut, yeah, continuing, you'll get one, one, two. Undercut, you'll still get one, one, and two. It's not worth it to undercut. Right, the same. So that the miners generally choose to continue. Um, with this, if you have a size limit of four, wait, one hundred. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna gloss over this a little. <laughs> um, if the frequency is low, however, you will want to attack. Right. So let's say there's there's a transaction that gives you a fee of two and a couple transactions with a fee of one, and this only happens like once an hour. Now you're gonna want to fight over it, right? Because if I'm this miner making this pink next block and someone else already got that two fee transaction. All I'm left with is one fee transactions. And so I'm going to get a reward of three instead of four. But if I reorg, if I undercut, I can potentially get a profit of four and leave that for the next person. So undercutting does occur in that scenario. Um, and so you can see this, the same model where it's like, even if you have a block size that ensures you'll have a large backlog, um, you'll still have some, fairly low but non-zero level of undercutting occurring even with small block sizes and then once the block size gets big enough that you're clearing out the entire mempool then it spikes again after that um so the question is like where is that limit and there's some interesting theoretical things where like undercutting occurs safe long term because and and this is sort of the, the where the model falls apart. It's like, I might want to undercut to leave some for the next person so they can leave some for the next person and so on, like really into the future. Um, so even if it looks like there's enough for everyone, we might want to undercut each other to like ensure that there's a really long backlog so that everyone builds on this chain and makes it the longest chain. Um, fee difference, right. So this is also looking at like how high the fee difference needs to be. Right, if it's just double versus 10x, um, and it looks, and and so the results we saw with like low fee differences, um, the undercutting does not occur, and then undercutting definitely occurs with high fee differences, and yeah, so we sort of saw what basically the results were that the stuff we saw last like two nights ago, undercutting should have occurred right in this model, and it potentially would have made sense for brains pool who mined the next block to have said, okay, I'm going to take 15 of that 37 and leave half for the next person. So that you see like a 15 and a 15 here instead of a 37 and a four or whatever the numbers would be. Right. So it, and in that model, it does sort of make sense that people would do this. Um, it didn't happen here because this is a sort of a one-off event, I think, but as things go forward, this may be what, what miners start doing. And, and so I know people were talking on like Twitter and stuff of like, hey, I think there's going to be reorgs at the halving. And there wasn't. And some people say, you see, I thought I, I knew it. But it does definitely see like this could happen, right? You, you could have a viable attack where some mining pool says, no, I'm going to take half of what you took, leave half for the next person. And that's an incentive for all these other miners. Um, so I think the long-term conclusion is that we want, we want an environment where this doesn't happen. Right, because it does sort of seem like this kind of scenario where you have a block and then the next block gets a tenth as much in total reward is not a stable, happy scenario in Bitcoin. Um, this could lead to attacks, and we don't we don't know any real good way to avoid these attacks other than trying to make sure we have more even fees over blocks. And well, this is like you know Friday night, and the fees were pretty variable, right? You have 23, 17, 12, 9, 17 again. Like, it was kind of crazy. And and there we didn't see reorgs. But if you if this is sort of the long-term view of how Bitcoin's going to work in 20, 30 years, um, I wouldn't be surprised if miners start coding their software to do these kinds of attacks. Um, so one, you know, there, there's a lot of mitigation strategies. So like even something like... Um, Someone was talking about uh, wallet, yeah, wallet fingerprinting. Sean was talking about wallet finger, fingerprinting before lunch. And Bitcoin Core does these sort of anti-fee sniping uh, mechanisms where you make sure your transactions have to go in after a certain block. And that can pre pre prevent some of these undercutting attacks. Um, 
but really it's like sort of a, a block size limit uh, problem where you do want there to be a mempool backlog you so that you can have sort of even amount of fees. Um, but this, this work sort of helped to look at, you know, when these attacks happen. And so if you have, you know, and very low is like really low in this model. So it's like, hey, just have your block be like, you know, 10 kilobytes. Hey, you're, you're safe. Um, that's probably not, you know, there's obviously downsides to this as well. But it also is pretty clear that with a very high block size, so, you know, gigamegs kind of thing, where it's larger than the mempool, um, you're open to a lot of these different attacks pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, so that's that's sort of we and you know that this is sort of a starting point. We this is not at all like we know what's going to happen, um, but it does sort of look like yeah. Hopefully in the future we have pretty even fees and we don't see these kinds of attacks. Um, if we do start seeing these attacks, that was another sort of direction we started looking at, but you know is not in this paper. Um, is it the worst case scenario? Do you still make progress if there?